About the title, it's not easy, because you know the book was published in, in uh, uh, several languages, and uh, almost each language or each publisher in, in, in the different languages uh, followed, you know, some ideas. Uh, the original uh, title, I would say it in Hebrew if you wish, Haumava Mavet, Historia Zikaron Politica. Now, if I'm very sensitive with words, and Haumava Mavet is very close phonetically, not content wise, but phonetically to, uh, to a quintet written by Schubert that I love very much, which is called Ha'alma Ve'amavet, The Maiden and Death by Schubert, which everybody knows. So it was also phonetically important to me, but it says everything that I wanted to say in, in the book. It means nation and death, or death and the nation, history, memory, politics. This is the original title. Now the book, listen, the, the book was written in the years of the Second Intifada. Uh, and it was uh, under the impression of, of the ongoing bloodshed, of the futility of, of this conflict, of the, of the cruelty and, and, and futile perpetuation of uh, this, this, uh, this conflict because of the perpetuation of uh, what I call Israel's victimhood is created uh, and developed and uh, articulated since the early years of statehood and even before, even before. You know, the proximity of the two events, on the one hand, the Jewish catastrophe in World War II and the genocide that uh, the Nazis have perpetrated against uh, genocidal uh, policy that the Nazi have, Nazis have perpetrated against the Jewish people, European Jewry, and on the other we had uh, in a proximity that we couldn't really as historians ignore uh, the establishment of the State of Israel. In my view, by the way, a direct outcome of this uh, of this catastrophe in World War II. And the establishment of the State of Israel took place in 1948. So you couldn't really separate the two, the two, the two events, the two uh, major events. And it, it became indeed in a, in, a, in a process intertwined, uh, completely, absolutely connected to each other, defining each other, explaining each other, nurturing each other, etc., in a reciprocal way. And I will speak about it uh, in, in my lecture. But this was in the, really in the formative period of the State of Israel, when the state was young, precarious, fragile, nothing was sure. The, 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 the project was immense, but it was based on, on clay feet, on feet of clay. So the, the fear, the anxieties, the, the, the suffering also, uh, hundreds of thousands of survivors of this genocide came, immigrated to Israel to become citizens of the state. They were present there, although, you know, Zionist, activist Zionism didn't, didn't see them, didn't in a way even consider them, in a way repress them and ousted them, excluded them from the public space because of the revolution it wanted to uh, represent, a revolution which meant a disconnection, a break, uh, from the diaspora, from the 
diasporic Jew and the new men that um, Zionism aspired to create and to materialize uh, there in, in, in Israel. Of course, these are phantasms of all the great revolutions of modern times, beginning with the French Revolution and, uh, and, and going uh, to the Communist Revolution, and also the Nazi Revolution, the German Revolution of, Na of Nazism. All those grand ideologies and, and uh, revolutions aspire to create a new man, a new calendar, a new time, etc., etc., a new beginning. Break with traditions, break with the past, and a new beginning, um, etc. Zionism uh, went and acted in this lineage. Uh, so, if it was understandable, the, 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 the you know, how shall I say, unseverable uh, connection between the two, uh, the Holocaust and the State of Israel if it was understandable in the first years of statehood, it is not understandable, it is not conceivable, it is not acceptable in my view, 60 and more years afterwards, and even all along, knowing that Israel has become a superpower, a super military power, that Israel is master of its of its destiny, of its history, of uh, that Israel has uh, taken the right and also achieved self-determination, etc., with with great uh, uh, with great uh, independence and and uh, assertion, etc. It is not possible to see ourselves uh, anymore, and yet this is the case as the victims in the equation, in the historical equation, and see ourselves as the victims and our, how shall I say it, weak, suffering, people who have not achieved uh, sovereignty, statehood, power, military power, who live in untenable and inhuman conditions under our military occupation, to see them as our victimizers, and this is how Israel perceives itself. And this is, this is, not, this is not acceptable, to me at least. People may not like my interpretations, etc., but then this is a game of interpretation, historiography and I am as free as anybody else to interpret the documents and the text and uh, uh, the facts, that the historical facts that I bring um, in this book. Uh, the, the, the second intifada, which was horribly cruel and, and bloody and unjust and uh, etc., was, uh, was I think a, a major motivation for, for really crystallizing uh, uh, this book, which was published, uh, by the way, within, still, while the, the, the Intifada was still raging in September 2002 in Hebrew, and it immediately uh, was taken by, by foreign uh, publishers to my uh, to my great joy, I, I must say, but I would like to say a word uh, only here. I didn't have a grand plan of the book in the first place. This is not how I, uh, I work. I work with the material. I call myself as a historian a driller. I go with the things deeper and deeper and deeper, and by force, of the material, by force of the really the, the, the historical data, I would say, text, doings, thinkings, etc. All 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 of this uh, out of it came came this book with the, to me it's uh, to me something 
even I would say, this is how I feel, something magic happened to me while writing, while writing this book. It, it, this book was, was, in a way, for me, written in a, in a moment of grace, really. Not with a plan, not willing to put the book uh, and then to create the havoc that it created eventually to my great joy again, uh, etc. No, it did its own work and through really a very, I would say, modest approach to the, to the, to the material itself. And then again, another thing that I must say, I owe enormously, immensely to, to the thought of a lady which was for decades excluded and excommunicated from the Israeli discourse, from the Israeli intellectual uh, uh, landscape, from, uh, from Israel's culture and, and politics, political thought, political philosophy, I mean Hannah Arendt. She is the, she is really the the, the driving, uh, the driving force of my of my thinking, of my work, uh, since I think the last fifteen years. She has enriched immensely my my thinking, and my intellectual space. Uh, she has been a, a fantastic uh, influence uh, on me and she helps also, uh, she helps me, you know, by her own story of excommunication, of being exclu excluded by, by Israel, by uh, other Jews, by the Jewish world, etc., etc. It helps a lot. Uh, in my case, of exclusions and uh, persecu intellectual persecutions and even material persecutions. Listen, I had to, to go in exile to teach because, uh, because of this book and because my influence on young souls, young Israeli souls, as they said, I mean literally to me. So um, I have a wonderful... Uh, um, wonderful help and support from, from, from her thought, from her books. Uh, in a way, I, uh, I sustain a constant uh, conversation with this lady and uh, it's a wonderful thing.